Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And today, this is the new format for the podcast, bro. We're going to try to keep it nice, lean, and mean, and quick, but we still have a good, big, fun conversation in store, all about asking the question of, why is it so hard to share my faith with people? So, Fuller, you ready for this conversation? Let's go. Let's go. First episode. What's up, good sir? Of the time back. So before we start off, we talked about this a little bit, and it's just like I'd been thinking about it, and then you brought it up, and I'm like, well, well Zach, Zach brought Zach it up brought to it up, me. Zach brought it up to you, but I had been thinking about the same thing too. But we want to uh, we want to start off with a word of prayer. So I probably should kill the music. I mean, it's cool. God likes music. That is true. God's the in creator of music. So we're gonna start this whole new season of the podcast off. And still not, season five, still but season new five, but like the new, flow. the new and improved uh, RTC with with a little bit of prayer. Absolutely. So uh, you know what? I'll tell you what. It's your episode that you wrote. I'll pray this episode. How's that sound? Sounds good to All me. Right, let's pray, dear Lord. We just thank you for this day, Father, and uh, we just ask that you bless this podcast and continue to let the content that uh, we put out in front of our listeners uh, be content that is um, going to glorify you and each and every way. Uh, Lord, we ask that these conversations that we're having um, help those who need to hear them, Lord. Uh, just uh, open our hearts and open the hearts of the listeners. And yeah, just let us uh, let us have a good conversation tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, so, dude, we're going back to the basics tonight. Going back, going to back. In fact, my hair is back to the basics. Did you notice? Bro, the fro's great. coming back. But the hair's not kicked up. We're ready to rock and roll. We are. So what are we fueled by tonight? We are fueled by... I don't know. I don't know. What we're we're we by. are fueled by Tacoa Coffee. Okay. It's the competition grade Ethiopian. It's banging, dude. It is really good. Uh, Jeff roasted it just recently, and I had tried it the first time he had gotten these beans to take on a competition. And I was like, yo, this is some good stuff. If you ever have it again, he's like, oh, I'll roast it for you. So I made sure to go in when I knew he roasted so, it. So serious question, not to get too far off track, but I want it a little bit for this. What is the difference between good coffee mm. and competition roast? Because a roast is a roast, but like, is it more... Bean quality. But, right, but is it also like more of a micro, even more of a micro roastery where you're doing a no. lot more control of that? I mean, no. Or is it better no, bean, better no, wash it's, process? It's better processing before the roast. The roast is the same, but it's the better quality beans you're getting. Um, there's different grades of beans. So, you know, grade A, grade double A, grade triple A. Oh, I've never had grade triple A. Grade B. There's a triple A? Oh, yeah. So it's a uh, fine. Which is that better or is that? It's better, yeah. Okay. It's triple I've only A's had double best. A. So it's like really refined. They they're really selective with the beans. There's no there's no issues with the beans whatsoever. It's a bougie. It's a bougie. It's a bougie coffee, it's a bougie. and it tastes like a bougie coffee. <laughs> but anyways, that is the coffee that we are drinking today. It is delicious. If you have not already, go check out Tacoa Coffee. Uh, they are in the show notes. Which so so the 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 owner of Tacoa is just Jeff. Right? Jeff, yeah. Is Jeff is Jeff a listener? Is he uh, listening right now? Yeah, I think he does listen. If he sometimes. does, bro, can you sponsor us? Yeah, we'll take a sponsorship. We would take. I actually a need to sit. I told him you need, that in fe- second quarter we're going to sit. Him and I are having to sit down. Ooh. So we're going to talk about some stuff. Anyways, and, well, before we review. Just like always, if you want to send us coffee, send me a message. Fuel the podcast. Because <laughs> that'd be dope. Anyways, uh, today's uh, review comes from David Bjorge. B-J-O-R-G-E. Bjorge. Oh, I think I know from the Facebook group. Yeah, yeah sure. And it says, Real Conversations to Ponder. I have been listening to their podcast for about a month after discovering them. The questions and conversations they have are great because they are in-depth, tie back Tie back to gospel and the word of God. Wow, I can't read tonight. Forgot my glasses at work. Uh, plus, wait, wait, wait. Pause. Yeah. What? Yeah, you yeah. have reading glasses. Yeah, I've worn them on the podcast. Anyways, plus they have responded well on Instagram to a few questions that I've asked. Even my parents have enjoyed hearing the conversation that they hear while I'm playing it out loud. I would say that it also has deepened my faith in God. Let's awesome. go. That's what it's all about. So check this out. So David mentioned Instagram. Now, we do try to keep up with Facebook and Instagram and email and text, and it's a lot. So sure. if you really do want to hang out with us, ask questions, the best place to go. Facebook group. is the Facebook group. Real Talk Christian Podcast Community. Yep. And so just over there, we've had a few, uh, we've had, we have like, 
But it seems like we have 10 new members every couple of days because we have it set up automatically where you're like, hey, let's welcome to do 10 new members. Yep. Yep. And yeah. it's always it's That's like a, almost every other day. It's like yeah, it's great. There's just new so people that, popping that, up all over the place. Yeah, that That's community awesome. is growing. Go check us out over there. But Mark, we're jumping in, guys. The important thing and what the people are here for is, yes, why is it so hard to share? My faith. Good question. And we're jumping at the five minute, 30 second mark. This is, this is, this is big time. So we've got 24 and a half minutes to end the show. And I have a lot of content, <laughs> so it's going to be good. So, cause you know, I was thinking about this coming off of a conversation that Beth and I had, sure. uh, Beth and I went to Fiddler's after yep, yep. we, which is an Irish, uh, an Irish pub here in the area, dude, banging shepherd's pie. They got really good fish and chips. Dude, I really enjoy their fish and chips. I had a lamb burger. Oh, Ooh, nice. Oh, it was so good. So good. So it's good eats. Good, yeah. good, good eats yeah, in yeah. South Bend. So we were there after uh, the, the Notre Dame basketball game and I was just having a conversation with someone who used to be a coworker and I've mm. been connected with them on Facebook, but I haven't really seen him much in the last like, I don't know, 15 years and just having these conversations. And you know, when someone that I know from my past or opens the door for conversations where we're asking questions, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I, I'm not worried about being in those moments and having those conversations where if, if someone brings up, Oh, so you used to be a pastor. So question for you, or someone will ask me a question. I have no problem with that. But when it comes to intentionally Mm -hmm. being like, I'm going to share my faith with this person. Right. That scares the bejesus out of me. Mm. And, and, and not just the fact of, uh, having a, cause you know, when you get into the philosophical, theological, right. Mental gymnastics conversation, Ethics. bro, yeah, sign right. me up. Let's go. Right, right. But when, but when someone's dealing with hard heart issues and I'm watching mm. these different videos of people who walked away from the faith and, and asking some of these tough questions, sometimes, especially with those folks, it could be really scary mm -hmm. to share your faith too. Cause you don't always feel prepared. You don't always feel equipped. Right. And so I was thinking, you know, why do I, or why am I scared to share my faith until mm. when I find myself in the middle of it? And then at the end, I'm like, man, that was awesome. That was so easy. Was why didn't I do this before? I don't want to do it again. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and you get into this rhythm and I was like, mm -hmm. you know what, maybe that'd be a good conversation of why is it so hard to share our faith? Does yeah. the Bible actually ever talk about sharing our faith and hard times in that? Mm -hmm. And then maybe Maybe we can give a little inspiration at the end for, I know a lot of people on the podcast, because we asked inside the Facebook community group too, of why don't you share your faith? Sure. And a lot of answers said, we don't know enough of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. We don't feel like we can, you know, hang there with their tough questions, mm -hmm. or I just, I, I don't like it. Like, I don't want to be mm -hmm. ridiculed in case I screw it up. Yeah. It's a lot of fear, right? There's a lot of fear around it. So, so the purpose of this whole podcast is again, to look at can we be scared? Is that something the Bible talks about? Mm -hmm. Does it also talk about how we can share our faith better? Yeah. And then what are some responses we should have from that? So so I have some different potential reasons why people share their faith. I know we talked about it a little bit, but I think one of the biggest reasons, and, and I want you to speak into this too a little bit, is is one of the biggest reasons why people, not just us, but mm -hmm. people in general are scared to share their faith is because of the way uh, Christians are viewed in today's culture because mm. it used to be America was a very big, whether you call it or not, you know, they were at least Christian influence nation. The, yeah. You got the moral majority from the eighties mm -hmm. from years past. We have Christianity woven all throughout the Western civilization. And in mm -hmm. fact, I would argue that the Western civilization only has Christianity to thank for the type of culture we got. But you know, nowadays Christianity is looked at as the the hateful religion. It's the unkind religion. It's mm -hmm. it's the um um unintellectual mm -hmm. religion as well. And so Christianity has a really bad rap specifically because of stances that us Christians have to take towards people's actions mm -hmm. or decisions that get us ostracized from the rest of the community. So mm -hmm. do you think that might be a big reason too? Well, so I think the main reason that I see uh, of a lot of where the fear comes from is is partly that, but it gets to a deeper, there's a deeper um, issue that is going on and, and it really comes down to fear of rejection. Mm. And, and what I mean by that is nobody likes to be rejected, right? It's like the worst thing ever when somebody's like, no. Well, you go out with me, yes or no, and you pass the note and they yeah, say no. It's, and it's, it's like, ah. it's heartbreaking. Or, hey, you want to go to this baseball game? No, nah, bro, I don't like you. Like, <laughs> like no. Nah. Well, that's one extreme. Rejection is hard, right? Um, and so I think a lot of people really struggle uh, with sharing their faith because of the fear of, like you were saying, ridicule, all these things. Those are all symptoms, I think, of the real cause of a fear of rejection. Your fear that that, that person that you're reaching out to because most of us, let's be honest, aren't going out and street preaching, right? And what I mean by that is like yeah, going no. and reading the scripture and with the megaphone. And there are the some street. people that crush that and don't yeah. don't sign me and up I for think, that, Kevin. No. But I think that's a, a, a tremendous gift. I don't think that's the norm, right? Those people that can do that, 
um, I, I think are, are gifted in that aspect. Okay. Okay. So here you go. So we're so real talk right now, sure. right? So real, hey, we're real talking fast. So do you think those folks who do the street preaching, not necessarily those who are out there like at college campuses where they're like, Hey, come up and you can ask your question that I'll answer them. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking about the folks that are on like legit mm-hmm. soapbox in the middle of New York city mm-hmm. or Cincinnati, or sure. I've seen them even here in South Bend. Sure. Megaphone blasting, turn mm-hmm. or burn. Like are, are those people actually hurting Mm. the cause of the gospel and maybe even hurting us Christians where it's like, I don't want to be looked at like this I, fool. I don't think so you know? because, uh, I mean, we're told to proclaim the the name of Christ in the highways and the byways, right? That's the old old Baptist saying, the highways and the byways. Um, but I, I think uh, society accepted it a lot better back 50 years ago than what they do now. Mm-hmm. And so it makes it look harder. I don't think that the, the Christian message has changed. I think it's the attitude towards of the world that has changed towards Christians. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, right? I don't think street preaching in that aspect is a bad thing if you have the right heart and it's it's done in, in a loving manner, right? Not the turn or burn type thing where you're going to hell. I don't care what you say. You're going to hell. You need Christ. I don't think that is a display of love. Um, I think telling the truth is love, right? That it's a good display of love and, and, and saying it to the crowds. I mean, I think of, of some of the old timers, um, from, you know, a couple hundred years ago when they would go out into the fields, right. And they'd be preaching. And I think oh, Christ, George Whitfield was a big one and hundred percent, but I think of Christ, right. Christ was, was on, uh, you know, had 5,000 people he was teaching to. Um, so I don't think that it's a bad thing. I just don't think that everybody is skilled at that. Right. And, and we'll actually jump into that because sure. one of the questions I had with this, because this was a question I actually asked as a mm-hmm. asked, I, I pronounced the K guys, <laughs> asked as a teenager one time mm-hmm. to, to my youth pastor or so, somewhere around, I remember asking the question of, well, are some people just better at it than others? Like, mm. yeah, sure. Okay. Maybe I'm supposed to call my faith, but well, are some people just naturally gift us like because we would have evangelists come mm-hmm. through and their title was evangelist so i think of brent savinsky who would travel all over america sure. and hold revival like revive fest and not yeah. not not the revive fest that we gonna be at in the summer sure. but like revivals and revival service and they'd preach all mm-hmm. these different places but more the fact of maybe there are people who are called to do the crazy go out there and show your faith mm-hmm. but are there some people who are just you know like you're called to just love your family so hang out at home mm. like well here's here's what i i my opinion is, is if God called everybody to be a Billy Graham, <laughs> we'd have a lot of empty homes or a Billy Sunday. Mm-mm. Yeah. Billy you know, Sunday has a uh, not great home where, where they were, were gone from their homes. And I think that would be detrimental to the Christian family core. Right. I, I think there are special times and special people that God calls to those special positions. Um, and then there's other times where um, God calls other people to, um, you know, start a podcast. Um, I think that if everybody was the same, right, the Christians would be very boring. And I think that it we see a good example of different gifts when when Paul talks about the body, right, and how mm-hmm. the body, there's different parts of the body, and we do different functions. And I think that that is the same. I, 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 am a, I wholeheartedly, 100% believe that it's every Christian's responsibility to proclaim the gospel, right? But that looks differently. Uh, depending on how Christ has gifted each of us, uh, Mark. For you, it may be uh, it may be that you are a street preacher, right? You're out there proclaiming the, and uh, the gospel to, a to Mark, the multitudes. Right? Uh, it's just an example, <laughs> but <laughs> proclaiming the gospel to the multitudes and and uh, God is using you in that way. And for me, maybe I'm just a librarian. You know, maybe I'm just having these simple conversations with people in the checkout line about, hey, how's your life going? Oh, it's it's terrible right now. Oh man, that's so bad. I, can I pray for you? You know, I would lo- really love to pray for you right now. You know, I serve a big God and g- God can do a lot of, you know, just simple conversations like that. Um, it could be, <clears throat> it could be Janiel or Beth talking to a friend or a family member and just sharing their, their faith with them and just like what God has done in their life for them. Um, gotten them through hard times or giving them hope in hard times or, shoot, just sitting there and being silent with them in hard time. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that could happen. And I think each person is gifted in the special way that the Holy Spirit has gifted them in to have conversations and to, and to proclaim that gospel in certain ways to reach people that not like a street preacher couldn't reach mm-hmm. or, or a person that is on a podcast couldn't reach, right? Each of us is gifted in an individual way to be able to um, carry out 
uh, the role of a disciple. And, and we'll jump into that in a little bit. And so I want to jump into the content here for about what the sure. Bible has to say about this. We could break it down because the Bible does say that some are gifted in different ways with different talents, with mm-hmm. different abilities, um, with just different things for different seasons. Like the Bible right. does talk about that. So we'll get to it. But I first wanted to jump into what the scripture says about this conversation as a whole. All right. So just as a whole of when it comes to sharing our faith, you know, I asked, I just literally asked a question, what does the Bible have to say about sharing our faith? And I kind of broke it down into four little takeaways or not points, but it's kind of like four takeaways that I, that I saw when reading all these different scriptures. And so I kind of broke them down into those groups. And the first one that I found was the fact of all Christians are called to be prepared to defend the hope that we have. Mm. So in 1 Peter 3, 13 through 17, it says, which we use this verse a lot here, who then will harm you if you are devoted to what is good? Even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Do not fear them or be intimidated, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet, do this with gentleness and reverence, keeping a clear conscience so that when you are accused, those who disparage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. For it's better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. So right here in this verse, a lot of times this verse was used primarily, I would say, when I was in Christian school in college, where it's the fact of you got to be prepared to be an apologist and you got to go up against apologetics. Every, uh, apologetics yeah. and you got to gotta defend the faith and you got to go against all these different rebuttals and rebukes and whatnot. And I took that as a challenge. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, baby, let's go, right. which is why we ended up here. But that's not what the passage actually says. Mm. What the passage actually says is be prepared to give a defense for the hope that you have. Testimony. Exactly. And that, that, that's exactly it. The right. fact of when people ask you, okay, so why do you have this faith? Why do you have this hope? It's not saying you have the most robust theological argument, but it does say be prepared to give an answer. Yeah, and it, I think it looks differently, right? Again, I think some people, it's just a simple testimony. And then God has gifted some as apologists to really defend the faith, right? To, to give answers to the hard questions that most average people can't answer. And I think that's also important for Christians to understand a little bit of apologetics to give the, Oh, absolutely. To give answers to those harder questions that maybe that's the one thing. That's the one question that nobody's answered before. And that's why they haven't been a believer ever that person. And then you're like, Hey, I remember hearing on a podcast, it's apologetic about this. And this is what they said. Oh, I never thought about that. I'll have to go research that. But know? the whole passage here is about the fact of when people come against you and yeah. they are they are asking you questions, they're trying to figure out, they're even trying to belittle you in your sure. faith. Yep. As long as you do it with a positive attitude and yep. you do it with gentleness and respect and kindness, but you still give an answer for the hope that you have. Yep. Not saying, well, you're you're a stinking moron for not you're believing going to this hell. too. That's not what it's saying. It's yeah. literally just saying, be prepared to give a answer. Yep. In defense for the hope that you have. Right. And I think of like Beth where the fact that people go, well, why, why on earth do you, fo- like, why do you foster all these people? And she goes, I don't know. Jesus told me to. Right. That's what she said. And that's her testimony with that. Now, I know we have a lot of different testimonies too about different mm-hmm. things in our life. But right off the bat, it says all Christians need to be prepared to defend the hope that you have. Mm-hmm. So my question is, is A... What hope do you have? And the hope is the fact of eternal life. We have joy with the Father. We have, you know, uh, fellowship as a church. There's different, I would say, different hopes that we have. But 1 Peter primarily talks about the living hope. That's kind of the theme all throughout 1 Peter. But it just says, be prepared to defend the hope that you have. Mm. Be prepared to give an answer when people ask. Mm -hmm, Not mm -hmm. necessarily go up against the biggest, baddest, atheist, agnostic yeah, brains not, out there. You're not going to have a debate with Bill Nye. <laughs> no, no, which, I mean, that's that's the type of content I take in all the time, yeah, and you right, too. Right. But that's not what it says. It just says, be prepared to give yep. a give an answer, defend yep. the hope that you have. And it's okay not to have the answer. Oh, that. yeah. It's okay to say, I don't know the answer to that, but here's some resources that may have that answer for you. That's but always again, a good... it's defend the hope that you have. Right. So as a Christian, I first want to ask you, A, do you have hope? And then B, are you, if someone says, so why are you a Christian? Do you have an answer? Mm-hmm. That would be my that'd be the first yeah. question I have. So the second thing the Bible says though is which is another very popular verse is Christians should not be ashamed of this gospel. Should not be ashamed of this good news of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Romans 116, you, you know, the Croix 116, mm-hmm. you know, Romans 116, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed. From faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous, or King Jimmy, the just, 
shall live by faith. And then we also see, and I thought this was a really fun passage to bring in here too, of we hear that verse and it's like, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And it's like, man, it's sometimes hard to, to not, not be ashamed of the gospel because mm-hmm. of, of the way culture views Christians all the time. But when you look at this next verse, when Paul was writing to Timothy, when you see the Greek, terrible Greek culture that Timothy found himself in, and you kind of think, oh, that's a very similar culture, maybe a little bit that what we deal with every single day. And then all of a sudden you say, now we can get through this. I'll go fast. So um, it, Paul says to him, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me as a prisoner. Instead, share in suffering for the gospel. Rely on the power of God. He saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. This has now been made evident through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. For this is the gospel. I was appointed as a herald, an apostle, and a teacher. Now, that's that's another thing, too, to think about. Paul was appointed as a herald, apostle, and teacher. He's not mm-hmm. saying everybody. He's saying that's what I was called mm-hmm, to do, mm-hmm. and that's why I suffer these things. But I'm not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and persuaded that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that final day. So the apostle Paul even says that I'm in prison because of this. You're going to be ashamed. No, not ashamed. You're, you're going to be persecuted for this as well. But we know Jesus is real. He lived a real life. He really died. He really rose again. So we have nothing to be ashamed about, even though it may be hard. And this is what I thought was interesting too. So as we go on, we actually see in the Bible that the apostle Paul had to defend his faith against his own thoughts and his own doubts. Mm-hmm. And I thought this was fascinating, especially coming out of what we just read, where it says, rely on God for it. You know, he he's going to work it all out to, to, to the end. I am not ashamed of it. I was appointed to this. But the Apostle Paul also says this in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6, that says, for although we live in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh, since the weapons of our warfare is not of the flesh, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. We are ready to punish any disobedience once your obedience is complete. And so what the Apostle Paul was saying is, as thoughts creep in, as doubts creep in, you got to take hold and captive of those thoughts. And so, and that's when I was reading through, I was thinking about what the apostle Paul actually may have meant by that. And he was talking about, you know, we demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up, but instead we take those thoughts captive. And so my question is, is what mental battles was Paul struggling with? Hmm. Like what doubts was he dealing with? Was he dealing with the doubts of, is this really worth it? Is this really worth my life? Is this really the truth? Is it not? Now, the Apostle Paul doesn't say that, so I don't mm-hmm. want to speak into mm-hmm. it, but it does say that we need to take every thought captive mm-hmm. in order to obey Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so this could also be potentially, is this physical things, like physical um, physical temptations that he is dealing with and come up? And I think that's where this big passage is, is as Christians, potentially one of the biggest challenges of us defending our faith is that our actions don't back up what we say. And so if someone would come to us and say, are you really a Christian? Because you do the exact same thing we do. Mm-hmm. You know, you got a bad attitude. You got anger issues. You know, you're doing this, that, and the other things. Do you think maybe that's what Paul is talking about as well? Mm, I don't think so because uh, then it would totally contradict what he says in Romans of, uh, shall I continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Oh, I'm not saying to keep going. I'm saying, but just... I, yeah, struggle. I don't. I mean, I'm sure he did have struggles, but I'm not. I'm not. Gonna well, spe- he had to. He ain't Jesus. I'm not going to speculate that that's what he was speaking to. <laughs> you but know I will I mean? say he says. But he says, and we he take does. every thought captive 100%. in order to obey Jesus. Hundred percent. But I don't know what that means as far as he didn't expound on that meaning. So I don't want to speculate. Gotcha. That's but but we can't say you know we demolish arguments and every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, which yeah. those are arguments and persuasions. Yeah, sure. And, and we take doubt, every thought captive. It's a doubt of, of yeah. the knowledge of God. He's taking that those thoughts captive and and obeying. And Christ. so that's that's more of just to take heart the fact mm-hmm. that if the Apostle Paul had to do that, and you're doing that, you ain't alone. Yeah, but it doesn't mean sit there with those intrusive thoughts. It means take captive of them. Yeah, work through them. them Try through them. Definitely. And then here's the last one, okay? And so I'm not going to read the whole passage, but the last thing that we see when we see about this whole idea of our faith and sharing our faith and defending our views is the fact that Christians will flat out suffer Mm -hmm. for our faith. We read it back in 1 Peter. Excuse me, uh, 
bubbly burp there. First Peter three words says, who then will harm you if you're devoted to what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. We see in first Peter four, it says, beloved, do not be surprised at fiery trials when it comes upon you to test you as something strange has happened to you, but rejoice in so as far as to share in Christ's suffering. You even see Jesus talking about where if they persecuted me, you think they ain't going to persecute you? Mm -hmm. And so as Christians, when it talks about we wrestle against flesh and blood, we just have to know that because we are Christians, we instantly do have a target on our back. Right. And, you know, I think this might be, and I actually want to have this conversation in, inside the Facebook group where there's a lot of people in the Facebook group who are not from the States. Mm -hmm. They're from different parts of Africa. They're different parts of Europe. There's even different parts of South America. Um, there's even some folks up in apparently Canada's a country that's north of us. I didn't know there was a Canada up there, but you know, it is what it is. So we love you Canadian friends. But like, but for you guys, I, you I, was, said, I gotta you, do it. You almost said Canada. Canada. I, I know you did. <laughs> Canada. Anyways. But so I, I want to have this inside the Facebook group, this conversation. So somebody started over there for me, but is it actually something where we have become so comfortable living in a more of a Christianized society that when we do suffer for our faith, we don't know how to handle it? Yeah. Or in other parts of the world, we're just like, yeah, bro, that's just comes with the territory. Welcome to the party. All right. So as we as we kind of wrap up here, right? And, and I know you're, people are like, what? Wrap up? We're just getting to the it's good weird. stuff. Right? It is weird. So here's some questions. You have it as my thoughts, but I'm going to pose it. These are the questions that I want to I ask our listeners to to wrestle through and we're going to put these questions in the Facebook group and we want to so hear Beth, your So Beth, help me out here. Beth, help me out. So so here's what you put as my thoughts, but I'm going to pose this question to our listeners. Okay. So uh, in, in the Facebook group, so it says, tell you, tell your story, but say because of my faith in the middle of it, right? So what does that look like? What does your story look like because of your faith? Uh, the second question is, have your actions backed up your beliefs? Is it hard to preach a gospel that hasn't changed your life? Uh, what does it mean to read and study more? Like, wh what do you got to do? Is that how you, how you, you know, overcome this fear of your uh, sharing your faith? Uh, ask better questions of others to have them share their faith, right? So, uh, how can we ask questions? And we say this all the time, you know, and it's something that I've learned uh, over the years is sometimes uh, in order to lead somebody to a certain place, you got to ask a lot of questions, right? Let yep. them figure it out on their own because then it becomes their own. They figure it out and they're like, oh, the realization hits and then uh, ask the Holy spirit for opportunities to share and to lead uh, the way when you're sharing. And I think that's a pivotal role uh, in any interaction we have when we're sharing Christ is making sure that the Holy spirit is at the center of that interaction, because that's where the fruits are going to come. Yeah. And so, so let's land the plane here then. So with this whole conversation, why is it so hard? So show, show hard, show hard. Why is it so, so hard? Show, show hard. <laughs> it's just Sean Connery. Um, <laughs> why hard. is it so hard to share by faith? You know, we, yeah. we, we, we read these different passages and there's a lot of other patches I brought in too, where there are different calls to different people to, to have different, different gifts inside the body. And I would encourage right. people to read first Corinthians 12 and 13 to, to, to read more about that. But for you with this conversation of why is it so hard to share my faith? I want to ask you personally, bro, is it hard for you to share your faith? It's cause I know for, for well, you, here, you work at a, so here's the thing. Let's do 30 seconds or less, right? 30 seconds or less, 30 seconds or less Dang. last wrap up statements. Dang. We have a 30 minute mark to hit. All right. So in 30 seconds or left, is it hard for me to share my yeah. faith and how do I share my faith? Would yeah. be a good question that I'm going to ask you, right? Okay. Yep. So in 30 seconds or left, I'm going to say, uh, there are times it can be hard. Sometimes you don't live the best way. Sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes you get angry. Um, but that should never keep us from sharing the good news and reminding people that that is the, the best part about Christ is that you don't have to be perfect to come to him, come to him as you are. And that's where that conversation goes. And I would say, at that point, just share your story. Be honest. Say, hey, I'm not a perfect human, nor do I claim to be, but I have a perfect Savior who came to this earth to die for me, died on the cross for my sins as a punishment, as an atonement for everything that I've done wrong and that everybody's done wrong. And because of that, now he has extended the gift of eternal life to me. You know, we're, we're all created differently. We all have different stories. We all have different gifts. And like I think of someone like you, I think of someone like, you know, you know we've had Morgan on the podcast yeah, multiple times. Yeah, right. Love love that dude. He's yep. he's on stinking vacation right now, living it up while we in the cold. Well, it's not really Beach that Beach and everything. Dude, he's <laughs> living his best life. Um, and then I even think of a good friend of mine, Tim. And I remember talking with him about, uh, Tim specifically, about working with the homeless here in, in South Bend. And I said, dude, that's just a stinking awesome ministry. And he said one little phrase to me in the text message. All it said was, he who has been forgiven much. 
That's all his text said. Like he yeah. didn't say like, yeah, it's awesome. He just said he who's been forgiven much. Yeah. And so I know there's a lot of folks out there. And I would say like you guys who have a really cool testimony of like, look, look what God brought me out of. Yeah. But then there's a lot of folks I would say like me and Janiel and Beth where, um, yeah, we've done some pretty stupid stuff. Like we've done some boneheaded things in our in our past for sure. But we grew up in a Christian home. This is this is the Christian environment we know. I went to Christian undergrad, Christian masters. I worked at a church for heaven's sakes. I've kind of been involved in the Christian culture and subculture my entire life. So I know it's hard for me to, because he's been forgiven much, or understands it, you know, and can forgive a lot much too. But then there's also the reality of we get to talk about, no, 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 no. I'm not just a goody, quote unquote, goody two shoes because I want to be and whatnot, but it's because of the fact of why wouldn't I because of X, Y, and Z. And that's why I think there's a lot of different gifts that people have where I feel like my gift is more of a teacher. And so I'm able to teach a lot of different folks, a lot of different things about the faith and have fun conversations in that. But I'm not able to reach certain people that you can reach to with your story. Right. You know? But I would say he who has been forgiven much he who has been showing much grace. Yes. Right. And that's, and that's, that's where probably you can, a different shift of attitude. That's, to have. that's where you can reach people that I can't mm. right to encourage them to strengthen their faith. And here's where I think it goes back. You know, how are we going to overcome? Let's, let's, let's end it here. So the Bible says, how will we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony? Right. And so I think there is a lot of, of power in people's story. And I think that's where I want to challenge people. And we'll end the show right here with the fact of your story matters and your story has deserved to be heard. And that's what first Peter talks about is be prepared to give an answer for the hope that you have, which is basically share your story. And sometimes you might not be able to give hard knocks answers, which that's when people say like, Hey, so I have a question about this. this, this. And you're like, I don't know, but here's an RTC episode that has taken care of that. Like <laughs> that's where we can help you out and come in, but don't be scared to share your story. And honestly, people, this is the other beautiful thing too, is people can't tell you your story is incorrect mm-hmm. either, you know? And so I don't want to just say you, all, all the faith is, is just a story, it, but that's how the early Christian church started. They started with the story of Jesus and redemption. He rose again and look what is happening. Mm-hmm. Sound good? Sound good. Dude, dang, it's only 32 minutes. Ready for some fun facts? Yep. Time for Fun Facts with February. <laughs> All right, my dude, I'm conflicted because normally we just wind it up. I, I about know. wound up for another one. I so, know. Well, that's good because we got three more to record today. Let's go. <laughs> so, bro, what fun fact you got to end this episode on? So, the fun fact of the day is your brain is constantly eating itself. Excuse me? Called phagocytosis. <laughs> phagocytosis. This process allows cells to envelop and consume smaller cells or molecules to remove them from the system. What? It might sound a little scary, but it's a good thing since it helps our brains preserve gray matter so thank goodness that we have zombified brains it's eating itself i don't know what to do with that information. <laughs> it's a fun i've fact, never bro. heard of that one yeah but there's very few fun facts where i, I mean, read them and go i gotta what i gotta throw some sideballs that wasn't even balls, side ball. yeah, that was a, balls. your <laughs> brain is a zombie yeah, your brain's a zombie. It eats itself. We carry around a bunch of zombies. Anyways, Mark, why don't you tell the people where they can find us at? Oh, man, you know all the fun places you can find us. Start, first and foremost, inside the Facebook group, the online RTC community. Just go to Facebook, load type in RTC online community, and it will pop up. You just answer a few couple basic questions, and you are instantly added into the Facebook group. But you can also find us on our normal Instagram and Facebook page, and also on the website, realtalkchristianpodcast.com, where you can find our email address, our phone number. You can search our entire library of of different conversations. So like what we said, hey, someone asked me a question. I don't know how to answer that. Has RTC covered that? You could really type it really fast. What happened to the dinosaurs? And you can hear me go, rawr. What about the next episode? Rawr. So there's a lot of different fun conversations. There's like three episodes before that when you did the rawr. But anyways, if you haven't already, go check out the (laughs) YouTube page. Hit that bell notification. Hit the subscribe button. Then the bell notification. So that when we're on, you're notified because uh, hopefully we get a lot more people over there checking us out now that we're shorter videos and you can actually see what we look like. Absolutely. And if you want to buy any of your RTC swag and merch, go to the website, click that store tab. We're taking over Redbubble where you can purchase like what I'm wearing, the RTC main primary white graphic on the front. Anything else for? Are we good, my dude? That's it, brother. Welcome to the new installment where we're going back to try to we're trying to be in 30 minutes. Sure. I talk too much. Yes, so we do, probably should let them right. go, huh? We, we still love you. <laughs> oh, right. Hey, guys. We love you all. Until next time. Take it easy.